Hello and welcome back. In today's video, you're going to learn how to create maps using Power BI. The map that you see on your screen is the map of the earthquakes happened so far in February 2024. I will leave the link to this data set in the description of this video. As you can see here, the earthquakes are colored based on their depth in here. So if the depth of an earthquake is from 0 to 10 kilometers, it will be shown in red since the lesser the depth, the more severe the earthquake will be in terms of destruction. And if the depth is between 11 to 20 kilometers, it will be shown in yellow. And if it's above 20 kilometers, it will be shown in blue. In addition to that, I have a filter in here through which you can filter the dates from example from 1st of February up to 10th of February. As you can see, everything, the earthquakes and everything will be updated for those specific dates. If you make it for example from 1 up to 8th of February, as you can see, everything will be updated. I am Qadir from Engineeringly and in this video I am going to take you through the step-by-step -step process of creating such maps. So let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to insert the data from a CSV source. So I'll go to get data. From here, I'll select the text or CSV. And as you can see, the data is located in this uh, CSV file, which is called all month. I'll select the file and click open. It will take a little bit of time since the data of the set is a little bit big to be imported into Microsoft Power BI. And here, as you can see, there are some things, for example, the delimiter or the data type detection, it's based on the first 200 rows. You can go and make it, for example, based on the entire data sets and term in case the uh, data is different in other cells. So, so it will go based on that. And in addition to that, as you can see, the delimiter in here is comma. And if you use a different delimiter, a delimiter is basically uh, a character which uh, separates two different types of data. For example, if in the same cell you have the time and you have the date, it's basically separated by the delimiter. So in here we will leave it as comma and we will go and transform the data in case we need a little bit of cleaning and applying different formats to our numbers in the data set. Uh, so once this is loaded in here, as you can see, our time and date is shown as time, as you can see the calendar and clock in here, so that's okay. But for the latitude, it's shown as ABC or text. We will change it by clicking in here to a decimal number. Uh, we will add a new step, and in addition to that, the longitude should be changed to a decimal number as well. And the depth is a number, as you can see in here. The magnitude is a number, and the magnitude type, as you can see in here, is it is shown as a uh, text and so on. So everything else seems to be okay. What I will do is I'll close and apply the data set. So it will be imported into Microsoft Power BI and we can do the necessary analysis with the data that we have in hand. So once the data is loaded in here, what we will do is we will add a map in here, uh, not the field map since the field map will fill the whole country or the whole region uh, which has a specific category of data. But in the map in here, we can locate the exact points where the earthquake happened and then add a bubble size to that so we can see where the earthquakes are deeper and where the earthquakes are happening at a shallow depth. So in here, the next thing would be to add the latitude. Under the latitude in here, double click this and bring it under the latitude. And in addition to that, we will add the longitude under the longitude in here. So I'll bring the longitude, add it under the longitude in here. As you can see, all the earthquakes that we have will be shown in here. So the next thing is to add a bubble size. As you saw in the previous demo, the bubble size is given based on depth in here. So down here we have the bubble size. I'll bring down the depth under the bubble size and you can see our earthquakes will be of different sizes. So which means that the bigger the bubble size, the deeper the earthquake happened. The next thing is to add a slicer to this in order to filter the data for a specific time frame. For that purpose, what I will do is 
click outside of the map and from here let's select the slicers and for the slicers what I will do is I'll add the date so as you can see in here we have the time I'll go to the drop down the date hierarchy since it's the data for only one month I'll select only day in here so if I for example filter it from 1 up to 7th of February 2024 only the earthquakes happen at these dates will be shown in here so I'll make this a little bit smaller and uh, move it to the top here. And next thing is to color code these earthquakes based on their categories. For example, whether the depth is between 0 to 10 kilometers or maybe above 10 kilometers from 10 to 20 and then from 20 plus. So for that purpose, go to our data source in here in the table view. But what I will do is add a new column. For this new column, I'll add a DAX function in that and I'll assign the categories. The name of this column will be depth category. So this will equal to F, open parenthesis, and since we are applying like two same criteria in the same cell, I'll use the combination of F and AND functions. So in here, I'll write down depth. If this value is greater or equal to zero and at the same time the same value is uh, smaller or equal to 10 then close parenthesis comma and here I'll write down zero to 10 kilometers and double quotes again again comma I'll write down if and open parenthesis again and open parenthesis I'll write down if the depth is uh, greater than 10 and in the, the, at the same time the depth is uh, smaller than or equal to 20 then for that I'll write down uh, again close the parenthesis comma double quotes write down 11 up to 20 kilometers double quotes again and our last condition will be if the depth is, since we are using only one criteria in here, so I'll use only the if function and not the and function together with that. If this is greater than 20, then close parenthesis and double quotes, this should be 20 plus. So double quotes again, and close the parenthesis once, and second time, uh, sorry, in here I don't have to put the parentheses and here I'll write down uh, 20 plus and double quotes since the if and uh, and function together is a different syntax and this one has a different syntax. I close the uh, parentheses once, twice and three times and then you'll press enter. So this will be added as category in here as you can see. Now we'll go back to our visual in our visual what we will do is the new thing that we have added the depth category we will add this uh, as you know as the legend in here so uh, down here we have the legend so what I will do is double click on this one bring it under the legend as you can see it's color coded and we can see everything in here so we need to do a little bit of formatting to the legends, for example, and to the title and everything. Now, next thing is to do some formatting to our map in here. Select the map chart in here, go to format the visual, and in the map setting, for example, let's change the style, for example, you can change it to aerial, and maybe it will take some time, and in addition to that, you can change it, for example, to light. Whatever is the way you like it, you can format your map to that color. And next in the bubbles, as you can see in here, the size of the bubble, for example, you can increase the size from here or maybe decrease it from here. The way you like it, the way you like your visual to look like. And in the colors of the uh, uh, bubbles, you can go for the blank, for example, we can go and select the white color from zero to 10 since the shallower the earthquake is, uh, the more frequency it has and uh, the more destruction it can cause. We will select a red color for this. 
from 11 to 20, we can select a yellow color. And for 20 plus, we can select a blue color from here. And moreover, we can go to general, for example, in the title, we can change the title to whatever we like it to be. For example, we can write down map of earth weeks in February 2024. In here, we can change the heading type and we can change the font from here. For example, let's select the Tahoma, for example, and make it bolder, increase its size, and more formatting you can do to your maps in here. The text color and everything could be changed as well. And in the visual, if you go, you, if you want to format your, your uh, legend in here, you can go to legend and for the legend, let's change the position to bottom right or bottom center, where you wherever you like it to be. And we can turn off the title or maybe change the title to a text. For example, write down the depth in kilometers so it's clear for everyone who is uh, going through this visual. So everything seems to be okay. So in here... If I go and filter our earthquakes for the whole year, for the whole month, for example. So now I can filter my map a little bit more, add more time frame to that. So more earthquakes are shown in our map. So here is how you can create uh, maps for your data uh, in Microsoft Power BI. I have left the link to the data set in the description of this video. So if you were interested, uh, you can practice on your own and use it in your daily tasks. I hope you have liked the content of the video and found it informative. If you did so, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and following us on Instagram or LinkedIn. Thank you very much for watching.